I am Silvia, known as Phoenix. Stefano Stack. We are three of the four founders of uh, Zanshin Tech, the digital martial arts, uh, which is a strange thing we are trying to explain you in this 30 minutes to, uh, lecture. Um, first of all, uh, how many of you read uh, cyberpunk novels or seen cyberpunk movies such as, okay. <laughs> I think all of us. <laughs> Lone Mower Man or uh, Johnny Mnemonic, Matrix, Ghost in the Shell, Nirvana, or uh, cyberpunk novels such as Burning Chrome or Snow Crash by Neon Stevenson. In all these uh, cyberpunk stories, the net can kill. Uh, we go online by plugging ourselves uh, in the net or uh, hearing helmets, and um, we, if we are killed in the net, uh, we, are, we die also in the physical world. But this is sci-fi, okay? The net uh, is not a, a killer. Uh, <laughs> we. We go online every day, a uh, lot of times in a day. Uh, we browse websites, we go on Facebook, on social networks, we, we text, we chat, we flirt, we dump each other online. And none of us uh, is dying because of this. Am I right? Well, there's a phenomena called cyberbullying, which is killing hundreds of young boys and girls, children, teens and preteens in many countries each year. Teens and preteens decide to kill themselves after many months of um, harassment. They, their life turned to be a nightmare, and the only way out they see is uh, to commit suicide. And there's another phenomenon called cyberstalking. Stalkers often find their victims online, then uh, they trace back them uh, into the physical world, start harassing them, start following them, start um, treating them, and occasionally they, uh, they kill their victim. And what about child enticement, pedophiles looking for uh, kids on the net luring them to post photos and videos, and then blackmailing them to have more and more, or even uh, to organize a physical encounter somewhere uh, in the physical world, which may end in a rape, in a sexual violence, and in the killing of the victim, or maybe the child himself decide to uh, take his life after this, for the shame of what, uh, what happened? What happened? And what about Ashley Madison dumps? Uh, do you know about Ashley Madison? Ashley Madison was a, a dating website uh, dedicated to affairs, which is a, a, a word, a specific word, when you are married and you want to have uh, sex with other people, which is not your spouse. So. Uh, Ashley Madison was a dating website for married people, a secret uh, dating website. Uh, their database were hacked, and the um, tons of gigabytes were published, and there were uh, some uh, grown-ups, some adults, that uh, decided to kill themselves in the shame of being exposed by these dumps. So, the net can actually kill. We are living in the same world cyberpunk novels told us. So we, we should stop right now thinking about digital world as it was virtual. We should stop using virtual term. It's not virtual, it's digital, but it's real. If you use the term virtual with a young boy who is asking for help because he is bullied online, and he says to you, please help me, uh, someone is harassing me online. And you say, oh, it's a virtual thing. Don't just, worry about it. You are just putting a wall between you and him. You are saying, it's not my problem. It's not real at all. It's not real at all. 
But digital aggressions are real, and they must be uh, managed in the moment, uh, like you would be, uh, you, like you would do when someone tries to hurt you in the physical world. Each of us has a digital self and a physical self. We exist in two different worlds. They are both real. You have a digital ego and a physical ego. Both of these identities, identities can um, attack. In physical world, you have martial arts. And in digital world, you have Zanshin Tech, which is a martial art. We started uh, studying cyberbullies, uh, cyberbullying uh, about four years ago, well, maybe five years ago. Um, at the time, uh, we were working in, um, in another association uh, that uh, had um, built uh, Linux uh, lab laboratories for schools, free of charge. And um, we started asking the schools that we serviced if they needed anything, if there was anything we could do for the cyberbullying phenomena. And they basically told us that it didn't happen in Italy, where we are from. And, you know, they have cyberbullying in the United States, in Canada, sometimes in Belgium, apparently in Australia, maybe in Germany and France, but it's never going to reach Italy. It just won't. About one year later, um, Carolina Picchio committed suicide. And this was the first big and recognized cyberbullying case uh, in Italy. And following that, apparently everyone, every major institution and school in Italy got a handle on his phone number. Yeah. <laughs> They start calling me and say, oh, Mr. Canavese, you are doing cyberbullying things, so uh, come to our school. We will give you two hours. And in two hours, you have to um, scare the bullies and teach everyone, make everyone aware of the phenomena, so that they will be safe for the rest of their life. Is With two enough? hours, 300 students in two hours. Is it that enough? It's just, we can't, ju we can't do it. It can't be done. We well, can't. We, we, we could, and we could be uh, famous. Well, yeah, we could uh, have been famous and possibly even rich off of it, but it wouldn't have accomplished the goal of making them safe for the rest of their lives. So, uh, we started thinking about cyberbullying. Okay, uh, we have a problem. How do you solve a problem? How do you solve a problem the hacker way? How do hackers solve a problem? There are four steps. You study the problem, you understand how it works, you study a thing, you understand how it works, you find a bug, you or exploit a it. Or a solution. So study, understand, find a bug or find a solution, apply it or exploit it. So we started studying cyberbullying. Uh, first of all, we realized that uh, we we needed something to change the mind of young boys and girls. And you cannot do it with a, a two hours encounter. Uh, you need a long uh, journey. <laughs> you need a long... Uh, you need something that, is, um, that will continue long enough to change their minds about how the world is supposed to work. So, well... His, his brilliant idea was that since he, his mind was changed at that age by martial arts, maybe we should try building a martial art. I did judo, and judo gave me a mindset, a way of seeing the world, a way of behaving. Uh, I use uh, every day in work, in uh, uh, relationship with other people. It's not just uh, defending yourself uh, if uh, someone tries to uh, hurt you. Uh, it's a code of honor. It's a way of life. Uh, I taught judo, so I, I, I knew uh, the methods of martial arts. And I knew that they, were, um, they are capable of changing the mindset of uh, even young boys and girls. Uh, they have been doing this for 100 years. So uh, we, we could use this. So we started studying cyberbullying. 
and we started um, reverse engineering it. Okay, if you have to understand how a thing works, you have to hack it. You have to reverse engineer it. So we, we took a lot of uh, cyberbullying stories and we made timelines, event course, by event. Of course, if you start searching for cyberbullying, you only find famous cases, and by famous I mean infamous. People who, uh, stories that ended with suicide. People that didn't make it. So we started studying those and uh, comparing the various timelines, and we started finding patterns. There are always patterns. So uh, every pattern that we recognize is a form of attack or a combination of attacks. If you can find that pattern missing that small bit, then that small bit is an attack in of its own. So if you have a pattern with three elements in a case, three elements in another case, and just two elements in the third story you are studying, you say, OK, so these two elements are an attack technique. And this second, this third element is another technique which may occur or not, but this is not related. And we started theorizing attack techniques um, using the point of view of the target. But we do not use victim. You are victim if you give up. You are not a victim, you are just a target. And we started theorizing attack techniques uh, using the viewpoint of the target, because a martial art must uh, give you a way to recognize the attack when you are subjected to it, when someone does it to you. So we have the utmost respect for what the police and um, judges do. They come after an event and, they, and their job is to punish based on what happened. So they see a pedophile that pretended to be a 16-year-old uh, looking for a 14-year-old. Or they see someone uh, stalking someone else, or just anything you can think of, any crime you can think of. But they have the full story, and they can say, okay, this happened, but in, later on, you found out something else, and so you can judge the entire sequence of events. We, want, we wanted something that could work while it's still in the process so, um, some, if you're under attack, you don't care if, they're, if they want your money or if they want to rape you. If they uh, apply a wrist lock, you need to know how to defend against a wrist lock. And so, basically, you uh, cut an attack down to the, the individual techniques. And if you can defend from every single technique, you will be safe either because you defeat your opponent or because you keep him at bay until he decides to go away on his own. And martial arts also uh, teach to avoid the conflict when possible. Uh, a true martial artist, uh, it's not one who wants to fight, it's one who decided not to fight if it's possible. He avoids the fight. So we started studying uh, and theorizing attack techniques. And we found also defensive techniques. Because we studied uh, cases which ended uh, well, because uh, uh, young boys and girls, uh, the targets, uh, managed to solve the attack by their own. Uh, so we, we took these patterns and say, OK, this works. This works for this kind of attack. This works for this kind of attack in this specific culture. And we theorized the defensive techniques. Then we uh, studied the defensive techniques we found. And we found out that they were the practical uh, application of martial art principles, ancient martial art principles, like yin and yang, like the void, like fluxes of attacks. If any of you is a martial arts artist, uh, you, you know the basic principles. Uh, don't stop an attack, let, let the flow pass, and things like that. So we had a martial art. We, we didn't invent it. It was already there. We just discovered it. And we are keeping it and uh, developing it, but we are just discovering it. We didn't invent anything. So study, understand, find the bug, and there is the bug. In digital aggression, there is a bug. The bug is that the aggressor, the attacker, needs 
everything from the target. If he needs uh, something to blackmail, uh, videos or photos, you will, uh, will give them to him. If you don't, he has nothing to blackmail you with. Even if he push you to commit suicide, he's burying your body to kill yourself. So, you have to give things to your attacker. If you don't give anything, if we can uh, do a, a target hardening, <laughs> uh, making targets sec more secure and more self-conscious, and teaching them how to use technology uh, quicker, uh, to be quicker and uh, more effective than their attacker, they will be safe. We, are, we have almost done. So we started applying this uh, with, a, with a small classroom of 10 boys and girls from 11 years old up to 14, 15 years old. It was a test class. This happened in 2014. Yes. And in three month, months, uh, one of our boys stopped an aggression by his own. And then uh, another one, and then another one. And they, uh, they started uh, seeing the digital aggression and stopping them. And after only one year, one of our uh, disciples stopped by her own um, pedophile in only nine minutes. He was pretending to be a 16 years old boy, a nice 16 years old boy, and con um, found her on Facebook and started chatting with her on uh, private messaging on Facebook. Uh, sorry, this is slightly besides the point of this session. Uh, this case will probably be in the workshop at 5 p.m. in Tau. Yes, we, we will do a workshop on this, and you will um, analyze. study, analyze a real cyberbullying case and disassemble it and find the techniques. So if you like to... Uh, if you want to try your hand at doing what we did in the first year of our studies, uh, we will be holding a workshop in Tao at 5 p.m. Yes, but we can just, I think, we have a small time. Uh, this girl uh, was contacted by this 16-year-old uh, boy, handsome boy. Uh, he started uh, chatting with her on Facebook. And, and flirting. Yes? And flirting. And flirting, yes. <laughs> he was flirting. Uh, but she was a Zanshin Tech practitioner. She was a, a digital warrior. So she knew that she has to uh, identify, to verify the identity of anyone who contacts her. So when chatting with this 16-year-old uh, boy, uh, she asked, uh, why don't we move on WhatsApp? Uh, come on, it's better, it's quicker, it's nicer. Let's move on WhatsApp. On WhatsApp, she extracted the cell phone number of his contact of her contact. Uh, she traced back the telephone number and finds out that uh, this 16 years old uh, boy, uh, it's instead a 25 years old man, uh, extremely violent, racist, with a very concerning uh, profile on Facebook. Uh, he has many subscription on porn websites and dating websites and sexual and curtain websites. Uh, so it's a 25 year old, years old man, um, Pretending, pretending to be a 16-year-old man, uh, boy, to, uh, entice. to entice a 14-year-old girl. Uh, she, uh, so she used the safety net we have. Uh, she warned, uh, she contacted other people. Uh, we did a little bit of OSINT, too, and we confirmed her suspects. For any and of you who don't know, uh, that's open source intelligence. Yes, all we Just teach is, uh, is legal. And uh, then she uh, confronted him, uh, calling him with uh, his real name, and uh, he, he replied, oh, gotcha and flee. Yeah, he said, got me, you got me. Yes. With a... <laughs> and stop. then we uh, managed to, uh, to let um, the police know about the, this man, uh, but... Um, Unfortunately, they told us that they couldn't do anything, uh, because, mostly because she was too quick. She didn't give him time to commit a crime. Nine minutes. The attack 
from when they met on Facebook to when she scared him away uh, lasted nine minutes. In those nine minutes, he didn't have time to commit a crime of any kind. So basically, there was nothing the police could do. This time. This but time. This is exactly what martial arts teach. How to win without extract your sword. This is the, the true meaning of Yaido, for example. Uh, and she went, won without having to, uh, to use the, the force, to use the police. <laughs> so uh, this is good. This is good also because um, uh, he could uh, relate uh, a possibly um, police uh, visit to his home uh, to the young girl he found uh, the, the day before. So uh, he could uh, have became uh, the... Um, uh, how do you say? He, if he had connected the police coming to his door with a girl who found out who he really was just the day before, uh, he could have decided, he could have made it his, uh, his point in life to find out who this girl is and attack her. And it could be her worst uh, nightmare for of the rest course, of her life. Of course, his name was, uh, w was well, sent. The police, <laughs> the police now knows that uh, we asked if there was anything we c they could do. So they already know his name informally. So this is the martial art we have been teaching for four years. Um, we'll be reserving a small amount of time yes. at the end of this talk for questions. So if you have a question, write it down or keep it in mind. And a martial art, uh, first of all, martial art must have rules. So we have rules, a code of honor. So the first uh, rule in our dojo is uh, do not attack. This is obviously a discipline-based uh, rule. It means that anything we teach you, anything you learn from us, anything you learn in the dojo, you will not use that to attack others but all, only to recognize techniques and so uh, you can defend from them. Think about um, uh, suicide push. Um, we study how people push tar their targets to commit suicide. It's necessary because if someone starts trying to push you to commit suicide, you have to be able to recognize it. But this also means that if you have any amount of intelligence of your own, uh, you'll be able to use the, that technique to push oh. someone else to commit suicide. That's against the rules. You don't do that. You can't do that. And obviously we don't teach these kind of techniques uh, until we know that, stu that particular student is ready to learn it because he won't use it. This is martial arts too. We don't teach uh, potentially uh, dangerous. dangerous techniques to everyone. We teach them to those we judge they are, uh, are ready to, to learn them. And the second rule is the respect and you have to respect everyone and everything. So you have to respect our other disciples, all the masters, and even your attacker, because if you leave the attacker a way out, then he'll choose it. It's a, a very old... Uh, uh, it's it's a, an interesting principle, principle. that uh, was introduced, as far as I know, from, uh, by Sun Tzu in The Art of War. If you leave your opponent uh, an honorable way out, he'll take it. If you force him into a corner, he'll fight to the death. So, respect to everyone. Uh, interestingly, respect uh, isn't just for everyone, including your opponent, it's for yourself too. And that can be hard to teach to children. Very hard. Especially teens. Go. The third rule is what we say in the dojo stays in the dojo. Because uh, sometimes people uh, want to, to say, all the group, uh, difficult situation they are living or something uh, embarrassing and uh, they must be sure that uh, the, the group, the dojo, is a, a secure place uh, in which they could uh, speak to each other 
and uh, uh, they know they not they will not be tagged before because of it of it at least two masters and three disciples uh, this is also for uh, pr protection uh, basically if you have one master with a lot of with a few children um, they could decide to uh, say anything about him, and it will be his. Um, it will be his word against the children's, and the other way around is also wrong. You can't have a master with one disciple or two masters with one disciple. So basically, we have this rule to protect everyone. It's, a uh, it's rule. also interesting vaguely interesting uh, for uh, its math, because two masters and three disciples means a minimum of four people. Yes, That's two fine. plus three in Zanshin Tech makes four, because uh, some disciples are also masters. Uh, for example, uh, on this stage, uh, I am the highest in rank, uh, because I'm the, um, the school leader, so I, uh, I am a master. Uh, they are both masters, but they are also my disciples. So they count as both masters and disciples. So right now there are, uh, one. there's one master because we have no one to teach at this time, and two disciples. Yes. But if we had someone with a white bracelet here, there would be three masters and three disciples. And so we, have, we, we, we can do a lesson of Zanshin Tech. So it's a, a small uh, algorithm. Uh, and it's intended to have uh, people of different ages uh, inside the dojo. Uh, you never stay al alone with uh, with the young uh, boys and or girls. The last rule is leave the dojo the way you found it. It's not just a rule uh, of order. You, you know, uh, we uh, we arrive in the dojo. There is and nothing. Uh, we. Um, we mount the tables, and if we need uh, computers, uh, each student, each practitioner, uh, mount his own computers. And uh, when the lesson ends, uh, he, ha he has to unmount the computer and put everything back in order. But this is not just uh, putting things back. Um, this is self-discipline. Putting things back and respect the dojo is self-discipline. Self-discipline is the programming language of yourself. Uh, like I said to a young boy uh, once, uh, if you decide to uh, fold your pajama every morning and put it uh, under your, um, your pillow, not because you have to, but because you want to. Because you choose to. Because you choose to you are learning the programming language of yourself. And when you will be 20 or 30, and you will uh, lose your job, or you will lose your partner, uh, or you will have to start everything uh, from scratch, uh, you will look yourself in the mirror, and you will say, OK, now it's time to change. And you will change. Because uh, you, uh, you have um, learned how to program yourself using self-discipline. So this is uh, the last rule, but it's not uh, <laughs> less It's not the least the important. Other. It's just the last one. Um, so at we, this point, we were trying to build a martial art, and we needed to figure out um, how to judge uh, okay. the ranking of people. Uh, we all have ranks, so he's obviously the highest in rank, and the two of us have different ranks. We, didn't, we don't have colored belts, we have colored bracelets. We, these are cobra bracelets from the survival world. Uh, this is paracord, uh, because uh, what, we de we, what we do, we, it's a survival course. And uh, of course, if you have to build uh, a martial art, uh, you will start with white and end with black. But uh, what colors uh, do you put in the middle, from white to black? And unfortunately, the same uh, train of thought that brought us to think of the problem as hackers also means... <clears throat> so we have white, orange, orange, white, green, blue. I know, we are nerds. <laughs> uh, from the blue 
uh, level, you, you are master. So this is the first dan, this is our black belt. Uh, from this point, you are master. Uh, even if you are 14 or uh, 13 years old, uh, you have to teach younger people while you learn new things from your teacher. Younger in practice. Younger in practice, uh, uh, we had once a uh, 12 years, years old girl uh, teaching to a 25 years old girl mm -hmm. and complaining because she was old, she was, uh, uh, she was too, too, slow. Slow. too slow to trace email headers. Come on, email headers! <laughs> it's but easy. She did a, a good job. <laughs> so, this is what we have been teaching in these four years of activity. Uh, we are um, also teaching other people how to teach. We are forming new masters all around Italy and uh, we hope to, uh, to create new masters also outside Italy because uh, this thing works. It does not work, works or work only for cyberbullying. In cyberbullying you have all 15 techniques, attack techniques. The attack techniques are just 15. You have all of them in cyberbullying. You have a small subset in cyber harassment, cyber mobbing, cyber stalking, uh, or uh, blackmails, and other things like that. Uh, so this works for any kind of digital aggressions, both for young people and for adults. We have uh, uh, disciples, disciples of uh, any age. So, we are open to any questions, or uh, you can find us in uh, Italian Hacker Embassy, you can ask for us in Italian Hacker Embassy, or visit our uh, websites. We, uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google+, Instagram. We were also on Imzy, but they shut it down, so. And um, if you want, there is a workshop at 5 p.m. in Tau Tent, uh, a two-hour workshop, it will be emotionally intense because we uh, will study a real cyberbullying case, uh, disassembling it in single events, extracting the attack techniques and discuss them together. And we will also see a, a case which, is, uh, which ended good, uh, which ended well. So uh, we, we, we will do a little bit of compression, at, de decompression at the end of the workshop. Uh, 5 p.m. in the Tau Tent. Thank you. Oh, shall we salute? Hmm? Yes. Salute. Okay. The uh, we, are, we are martial artists, so. Right? This is the bow. So, thanks a lot. If there are any questions, please feel free to walk to the microphone and. Yes. Yes, she was aware of, uh, of it. Uh, yes, uh, she. Uh, um, he asked uh, when the little girl uh, moved on WhatsApp. Uh, she gave also her number. Yes, but uh, this was part of her strategy. She was aware uh, of it. And uh, this is an ancient principle uh, you can find in uh, Chinese uh, art of war, uh, which is uh, you give the attacker something uh, to have a great victory. So uh, sacrifice something to have uh, something back. She, uh, also, she was aware, aware about it. She also didn't sacrifice so much because her number was, pub was already publicly available on some sites, not all of them, but yes. <clears throat> Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Wow. Our explanation was that exhaustive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, if there are not any questions anymore, um, you heard about the workshop tonight. Let me say thank you also thank you. to Claudio, Silvia and Stefano. Thanks a lot for having you here. And uh, it was a big pleasure for us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.